Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our continuing discussion of Vietnam. In the previous lecture, we talked about the man that the Americans tapped to lead South Vietnam as they attempted to win the elections set for 1956, Wo Jin Giem. I also talked about some of the divisions in Vietnam and the challenges confronting Diem during his rule. And we concluded with the observation that only a political genius could have successfully led all of the diverse groups in Vietnam. Of course, Diem was no political genius. In this lecture, we'll pick up that story and continuing discussing how Diem attempted to rule and the reasons why that rule ultimately began to crumble. Diem expected to rule with the, quote, mandate of heaven, with a groundswell of popular support behind him. He believed in the rule of a single sovereign and domination of an elite class. He simply would not tolerate any opposition. He continued to attack any groups that didn't support him. At times, he launched attacks against the Buddhist sects and the Khmer. He also angered the Khmer and the Montagnards with his land policy, which essentially called for distributing the lands to newly arrived Catholics from the north. Much land was taken away from the Buddhist, Khmer, and Montagnards and given to Catholics. He also appointed Catholics to oversee many of the villages, which angered those groups even further. Understanding that he had virtually no chance to defeat Ho Chi Minh if the Geneva Accords were upheld and the elections were held in 1956, Diem canceled the elections in late 1955. Ho Chi Minh denounced the decision, but of course was powerless to change it. And thus, the elections called for in the Geneva Accords were never held, and the temporary division became permanent. Diem continued to rule with an iron hand, but he rightly feared for his well-being. He lived an extremely isolated life, rarely leaving his presidential palace and even his bedroom within it. Since he refused to trust any outsiders with his administration, he appointed family members to many important positions. The most important of these was his youngest brother, Wo Jin Nu, who served as political boss of South Vietnam. He was arrogant and contemptuous of others. He especially hated monks, who he said he wanted to, quote, put in their place. He admired Adolf Hitler. And second only to Diem himself, he was in power in South Vietnam. Diem was celibate and unmarried, so Nu's wife, Tran Le Juan, served as the first lady. Madame Nu, as she was known, was fanatical, leading public campaigns against card-playing, adultery, movies, gambling, prostitution, and other many sinful activities. She had people arrested for their hairstyles or their clothing. The Diem family was extremely unpopular, but ruled ruthlessly. The most stubborn opponent he encountered was the Viet Minh. After Diem canceled the upcoming elections for 1956, Ho Chi Minh called all Viet Minh to North Vietnam. Many of them left. Others remained to continue the resistance. Diem despised the Viet Minh and gave them the derogatory name Viet Cong, which translates roughly as commie bastards. The name stuck for American soldiers, who often called the Viet Minh VC. And even now, when you watch films about Vietnam, it's not uncommon to hear the phrase VC, or Viet Cong, in reference to the Viet Minh opponent. In late 1955, Diem launched a violent campaign against the remaining Viet Minh, about 10,000 of them. Under the slogan, let us mercilessly wipe out the Viet Minh, no longer considering them human beings. Diem's forces raided villages throughout South Vietnam. More than 100,000 people were arrested. 
an estimated 20,000 to 75,000 were executed, and another 100,000 sent to concentration camps for, quote, re-education. As I noted a moment ago, it was estimated there were only 10,000 Viet Minh remaining, so many tens of thousands of people were prosecuted unjustly. The Viet Minh population itself did suffer during this time, dropping as low as 3,000. Many left or were killed. At the same time, the death and intimidation of so many innocents roused opposition to Diem on many fronts and made recruitment into the Viet Minh even easier. In December 1956, North Vietnamese leadership organized a campaign to recruit in the South and disrupt the GM government. Ho Chi Minh gave simple instructions. Do not engage in any attacks that could be defeated. Do not attack or injure civilians. Do not antagonize unnecessarily. Use the smallest weapons possible to avoid civilian casualties. Viet Cong assassins went after the corrupt village officials first. They seized lands and redistributed them to the peasants. In 1958, they executed more than a thousand village officials, and the number rose in 1959. Diem's response was to further increase his repression, which only made him less popular, and this cycle of escalation continued through the end of his reign. He launched the Agroville program, which relocated peasants into villages away from Viet Cong influence. They were heavily armed and surrounded by barbed wire. Relocation, of course, was painful for the peasants, who were forced to move often against their will. Diem also authorized military tribunals, which could execute someone on the spot, even under suspicion of being Viet Cong. Many were executed, but again, innocent civilians were often caught up in it. Torture was common throughout all of this process. The North Vietnamese responded to this repression by beginning to plan for a larger engagement. They began making plans for more systematic attacks into the South. At the same time, the United States began to plan for an invasion of the South as well, sending military advisors to help South Vietnam prepare for it. The number of Viet Cong began to climb again, and pressure on the Diem government was growing. The political situation was deteriorating. In November of 1960, one of Diem's military officers launched a coup against him that ended unsuccessfully. Diem responded by arresting thousands and increasing his repression even more. On November 11, 1960, a week later, John F. Kennedy was elected President of the United States. Kennedy and Eisenhower began planning the transition in his presidency, talking over policy for the next few months. As Kennedy later revealed, you know, Eisenhower never mentioned it. He never uttered the word Vietnam. In our next lecture, we'll continue the, the story of Kennedy's presidency and how he addressed what was happening in Vietnam.